So the purpose of this video is to show you how to set up your file in a little bit more detail. Uh, this all in anticipation of you starting to build your layout. So what I want to talk about is how to set up your columns, how to set up the space between your columns, which are called gutters, and then how to set up your margins. And then once we've done that, I want to show you how you can modify those very easily within the document. So here we are in the new document window. Um, you'll notice that it is currently set to letter sized vertical. The unit of measurement is inches. Uh, down here, you'll see this currently has four pages, but I'm gonna change that. I'm gonna make that be three pages. And then here's the question, do I want facing pages or not? So we'll come back to that. The start page will assume I do, so I'll make the start page page one. And then we're down to this bottom part, which I glossed over um, in the earlier video. So how many columns do you want? Um. Well, good question. We're gonna start with two. And then the gutter, the column gutter, the space between the columns. Well, generally I like to start at around a quarter of an inch. You wanna be very careful that you don't get your columns too close together. Otherwise, the reader may read across from one column right into the next column when their eyes should be going down to the next line. So quarter of an inch is generally gonna work pretty well. And we can, again, we can adjust this easily in the document if we change our mind. Okay, down here to margins. And so you'll notice that what we have are four margins to set, the top, the bottom, the inside, and the outside. Well, that's a little weird. What does that mean? Huh? Well, that has to do with the facing pages. So I'm gonna turn off facing pages for a minute. And then you'll see that this changes to be something you might expect, top, bottom, left, right. And that makes total sense if you're dealing with just a single page. But when you're dealing with facing pages, then you lose that context of left and right because it depends whether it's a left or a right page. So if I turn facing pages back on and get the inside outside back, then I can go ahead and set those. Now, before I set any of these though, you'll notice that they are currently all at half an inch. I don't want them to all be the same. I want them to be different. So you'll notice over here to the right of those measurements is this little link symbol. So I need to make sure I uncheck that. Otherwise, when I change one, they all will change. So I'm going to unlink that so now I can set them individually. So the top, I want to set to three quarters of an inch. Uh, the bottom, I want to set to 3.375. And then the inside and the outside. I'll start with the outside. The outside, I'm gonna make that be 0.625, so that's already set, that's good. Now the inside, you might think, oh, do you just wanna set that to be the same? But no, look at how the two pages look next to each other and that space in between them. So if you make equal space for the inside margin, when you put two pages together, you're gonna have a gigantic gap. And so general rule, I tend to make this not half necessarily, but just a little bit more than half. So I'm gonna set that to 0.375. Okay, and uh, at this point we are done. I'm gonna click OK. And there is our page one. And here are pages two and three. So let me show you a trick. If you hold the space bar, it will give you the grab hand. So you can't have the type tool active when you do this, but any other tool, if you press down the space bar, it'll give you the little grab hand and you can drag your pages around. That's a really nice way to uh, position things and to move around. So page one, pages two and three. And so again, these are the inside margins, outside margin, there's the gutter, and of course the bottom and the top margins. Okay, so we've got this all set up and then we go, oh my God. Whatever. I was supposed to have three columns. And those margins, they look funky to me. Yo! So here's the thing. 
no big deal. We can fix that. So I'm gonna scroll back up to the uh, first page here. And then you may think we're gonna go back to that document setup box under the file menu, but we are not. We are gonna go to the layout menu, which makes sense, right? right? And then I'm gonna pull down to margins and columns. That will give us this groovy little window. Very. And you'll see there are all the margins we set, there's the columns, the gutter. So we just need to change these to be what we want them to be. You'll note the preview button is checked so we can see our changes as we make them. So the first thing I wanna do is give myself three columns. Oh my. And just like that, we have three columns. I also decided I'd like a little more room at the top, so I'm gonna make the top be one inch. Um, so we have room for a headline up there. Uh, bottom, that's maybe a little bit small, so let's bring that up just a touch. Um, inside and outside um, still seem about right to me, so I'm gonna leave them alone. And then the gutter, uh, that also seems about right to me, so I'm gonna leave that alone as well. And then I click OK, and just like that, my margins and uh, columns have been changed. So I'm gonna scroll down here to see pages two and three, and I'm gonna notice that something weird is going on here because I've got the three columns here, but I only have, I have my original two columns here, and I can tell the margins didn't change either. So what the heck is going on with that? So I'm gonna open up the pages window to see if that gives me a clue, and sure enough, it does. So what I should have done if I wanted to change all three pages is in the pages window here, I could hold the shift key and I could mark all of the pages and then all of those pages would change. But let me show you something. There will be a whole nother video on this on master pages. So I'm gonna show you this now just because it's a much easier way to change the columns and margins on all the pages at once. So I'm going to see down here, now I have my masters at the bottom, yours may be at the top, um, but I'm gonna go over here and see a master. Okay, what does that mean? I don't well, know. if you look at the pages here, you'll see that there's a little A in the upper corner of each of those pages. Well, what that means is the A master has been applied. So when you open up a new file, InDesign automatically makes an A master page and it automatically applies it to all of the pages that you start with. Now you can add more master pages and have them be different from each other. We'll get to that in the other video. For now, let's just modify the A master to be what we want it to be. So I'm gonna double click on those two pages. And you'll notice that down here where it normally tells me the uh, page number, it's now saying a master. So I know I'm in the right place. But again, with this, I need to make sure I change both pages at the same time. So I'm gonna shift click to make sure both of those master pages are active. Then I can close this so you can see a little bit better. And then we do exactly the same thing. We go up to the margins and columns under the layout menu and we make all the same changes. So I'm gonna make that be three columns. I'm gonna make my top be one inch. Um, I'm gonna make my bottom be just a little bit higher up. Um, I left these the same, I left this the same. So I believe we're all good now. And then I can just click okay. Now, if I go back to the pages menu, that's all well and good. Um, the master pages changed, but did it change the actual pages? So I'm gonna double click on pages two and three. You'll see it down here at the bottom, it says page three, so I know I'm in the right place. And sure enough, that change has now been applied to all of the pages. Okay, last thing, and this is pretty much a pickup from Illustrator, but you'll notice the rulers are showing. If for some reason the rulers aren't showing, um, then you can get them from the view menu um, right here. The keystroke for that is Command R, which toggles them on and off. And then if you want an extra guide in here, well then you can just drag those guides right in to position maybe something within a column or to measure the distance of something. Say you wanna inset Poto right here and you want it to be a specific size, you can pull a guide in so that you can use that as a guide to size the picture. Okay, so smart guides. 
Smart guides work exactly the same way as they do in Illustrator and Photoshop, so I won't cover that again, but I just want to show you that under the View menu, if you pull down to Grids and Guides, there are Smart Guides and you can turn them on and off there. Keystroke for that is Command U and that is true in uh, Illustrator and Photoshop as well. And so that pretty much ends this video. In the next one, we are gonna start getting some type into these columns and that's when the fun begins. Thank God.